guys, so we just made it out here to the Grand Canyon just before sunset. Um, the clouds are kind of coming in and out. It's all low hanging clouds, so yeah, the yeah, Grand Canyon kind of all of a sudden will yeah, reveal yeah. itself and then it goes back it's in. So clearing and I'm using a uh, long so lens here back, and just trying to pick like out like details whenever the clouds would break up. It's kind of like a turret. I'm just kind of shooting everywhere because the clouds are moving so fast and things are kind of coming in and then coming out. Uh, as far as you know the landscape and things like that there's a couple of peaks here that are really nice that i'm trying to concentrate on but you know with the clouds moving so fast it's kind of a shoot and wait but um, absolutely beautiful this is the first time i've been here in winter time uh, and i'm just absolutely beautiful i'm loving it and uh, yeah we'll see what happens here i don't think we're gonna get too much of a sunset the sun's kind of setting behind us because we are facing north and uh, so we're gonna be here for sunrise and sunset i'm super excited for it and uh, yeah let's see what happens All right, guys, so the first thing I did we set up here because it's kind of we we're in a hurry. Uh, what I did was use the wide angle lens and I used this kind of a uh, yucca plant here that's covered in snow. Use it as foreground. The problem is when you use a wide angle lens here, uh, it's really hard to convey the scale because it's such a big place. So what I try and do is use a long lens most of the time, but I did want to use kind of scale to show the size of this place. So I use this yucca plant as kind of a foreground, giving a little bit of foreground interest. And then just kind of after that, um, taking out the long lens and kind of picking out details and things like that. Alright guys, we do a, like a proper introduction. Welcome to the Grand Canyon. It's a Christmas day today and mm -hmm. uh, it's beautiful and snowy outside and uh, mm -hmm. but it was kind of a rush to get there, wasn't it? We, we barely made it. By the time we checked in here and made it out there, it was like we had like maybe a half an hour of shooting time. So it was really rushed. We didn't get a chance really to talk on the, on the camera too much because we were in such a rush. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, there was a lot of people, so it was kind of hard to talk. I talked a little bit, but there was just so many people there, and everybody was very loud and excited because um, the clouds were just kind of breaking up and revealing this beautiful big landscape. And, uh, you know, everybody's kind of hip and hollering and, and, and kind of yelling out and things like that and getting excited, so it's kind of hard to talk to the camera when that's going on. So, plus we wanted to kind of just set up, get the shot, and then, you know, kind of talk to the camera mm -hmm. afterwards because there was just... It was so chaotic with the clouds like you'd have a shot that you wanted like this a couple of peaks that were really beautiful but um you know they'd get covered up in clouds and then you'd have like they all of a sudden they'd break up and they would just reveal that beautiful peak and you'd have just a second to really shoot it so it was kind of hard to, to vlog <laughs> and then it's gone this. again yeah. yeah so it's kind of tough to vlog at mm -hmm. the same time we are actually here for tomorrow morning for sunrise because mm -hmm. the conditions are um supposed to be very good mm -hmm. we kind of had a, a wrench thrown in our plans we originally wanted to go on this place called the hermit road which is closed off to passenger cars and only the buses are allowed all year except for in winter time. Um, from December 1st on, usually the road's open, but it was actually closed today because of the road conditions. Uh, that's one. That's the place that we we're really going to go, and that's a place that I wanted to go to, uh, that I've been wanting to go to, especially for winter, and uh, it was closed today. So we kind of like, well, we had to, had to like, again, had to rush and uh, find this other point, which we went to today, which was... Yavapiti? Yavapai. Yavapai. So yeah, we went to Yavapai Point, and that's probably where we're going to head back to tomorrow. Like Chris said, the conditions are going to be good, so we're going to try and hit that place. We're going to do a little more research tonight, uh, have a place in the morning, get there early, and uh, be able to take our time and, and talk to you guys and show you that just absolutely amazing place.
Alright guys, well we just got out here, uh, still pretty dark out, we're kind of setting up. We're out on this kind of ledge that's kind of an outcropping looking over. Not a lot of foreground here, but uh, I think it's a, a nice spot we can face both directions. So if we face northwest, uh, with no clouds in the sky right now, or not very many, you get that color opposite of the sun. It's called the Belt of Venus, I believe. It's that kind of magenta from a, like a dark blue to magenta to kind of like an orangish color that happens as the sun rises or the sun sets, you know. Uh, in this case, it's, you know, before sunrise, before the sun breaks the horizon, you get that color kind of on the, uh, the opposite direction there. So that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get. I love snowy scenes with that kind of color in the sky when there's no clouds. Uh, usually, of course, as landscape photographers, we like to have clouds and any kind of blue skies is not very good. But with snowy scenes, I seem to think that I, I kind of like shots like that. So I think that's what I'm going to try and do is set up to where I can take a shot like that and also kind of face down towards when the sun rises. I'm uh, going to get some light inside the canyon here. So super excited. It is so cold. I think uh, we stopped at the gas station right by the hotel and it was like it said 10 degrees in my truck at one point uh, Fahrenheit, of course. Uh, which is so, it's so cold, but um, absolutely beautiful out here with snow on all these trees. And uh, just like I said uh, several times before already, I'm sure is the first time shooting the snow uh, here in the Grand Canyon. And I'm just, I'm so excited for it. This is just amazing. So good morning everybody. Um, I'm here a little farther away from Mike. He's down there behind on, on that rock photographing. And uh, I was walking along the path here um, at the Abapai Point. Um, I think that's what it's called. And I uh, was looking for some nice trees here that could give me some nice uh, foregrounds. Um, and as you can see here behind me, that beautiful tree. Uh, this was my subject this morning and uh, there was a cloud like back up here <laughs> and uh, it caught beautiful purple and pink light and that was that was amazing so what I did is I placed um, the tree on the left hand side of my frame and then the cloud came in like from the top right and uh, I tried to photograph this uh, vertical and horizontal I think the um, horizontal works better here just because uh, it gives it a little bit more um, balance than the vertical does because in the foreground there is just snow and uh, you know not a lot of interest there um, but uh, I try to find a spot here where there is some pattern in the snow that actually gives me a little bit of interest here in the foreground and maybe leads leads you into the photo um, maybe I will do some but dodging and burning here to uh, intensify the patterns of the snow here um, I'll have to look and see how it looks on the computer if I need to do that or not so that the vertical actually works too not just the horizontal version and um, when I first came here I uh, you know I try to stay on the path not to disturb the snow because I just I love photos where there's like nothing disturbed and everything is is you know as nature did it like that beautiful piece of, of art and uh, so what I did is I walked along the ridge here and uh, I came a little bit farther back and I found this tree so uh, there probably will be some of my footsteps in the photo all the way to the right um, in the horizontal and in the vertical uh, version probably maybe I can uh, you know hide that a little bit with a little bit more shadow on this side we will see how it works out but that's kind of you know a tip that maybe is good for uh, if you're ever out in the snow photographing uh, it's it's the same when you're when you're photographing a seascape and you have uh, the sand and you walk in the sand and then you have all these footprints in the sand um, i mean it can make for a very interesting photo with the footsteps leading to something maybe a castle in the distance uh, for example but um that's just not so much my style i i like it you know back to nature i like it everything as it was i my settings here are not you know very special or interesting it's a uh, just a basic like ISO 100 and uh, try to expose a little bit to the right which means um, my histogram was leaning a little bit more to the right because uh, snow makes you your messes with your camera and uh, 
can uh, make look the snow very gray and when it actually you know makes it look overexposed even though it isn't so I tried that and uh, then uh, for photographing the tree I like to use like lower um, apertures so what I did is I photographed it at 5.6 and I think 7.1 just because um, the backdrop here, which is the, the um, north rim of the Grand Canyon, like the canyon walls, I mean, it's a beautiful, um, beautiful thing to see, but on camera and in the photo, you probably can't see all the details so good anyway. So that's why I didn't choose um, a sharper ap aperture like nine or 10 for, for my lens. And if you want to know the sharpest aperture, aperture for your lens, you can look that up. Um, it's different, you know, from uh, lens model to lens model and uh, so now it's time to um, head back over there and see what Mike is doing. I'm sure he is still photographing. He likes, you know, when the sunlight is breaking through and lifts up the canyon walls and everything. I like that too, but um, I think I need to change the long lens and uh, then I can just stand next to him and we can uh, chit chat for a little bit while taking photos. So uh, let's head over there. Alright guys, so the long lens is on now, the sun is actually up, and I don't want to hear it from you guys about my bracket here and not being on the long lens. I forgot it again, that seems to be a case, the case. Every time we go somewhere, I always forget my extra one, I always leave it at home. Uh, I'm just picking out details now, using the long lens, I'm, you know, anywhere between 100 and 200 millimeters, just picking out where the light is, and uh, just shooting this. As the sun rises, the light keeps changing a little bit, and uh, uh, there's so many layers and things like that and with this long lens it's kind of compressing those layers a little bit and uh, just with that combined with the light and the color right now is just absolutely beautiful. Thank you. 